Hello, and welcome back to the Aimless Electron. If you're like me, you like soldering things yourself, but sometimes the SMD components are just too much of a pain to do, they're too small, or there's too many of them. So you need a reflow oven. Well, I plan to build one myself, so the next couple episodes will be about the build and design from scratch. I haven't done any of it beforehand, just a couple ideas of what I want to do. Anyways, I got a Frigidaire uh, oven off of Amazon for like a hundred bucks, so I'm trying to keep everything cheap and use mostly off-the-shelf components except for a custom circuit board. I'm going to tear that down next, so let's take a look inside. Okay, well here's the toaster oven and you got to bear with me, I've never done a tear down of something quite this size before, so I'm not sure what's really good for the video angle. Anyways, uh, it's a nice little box. One of the nice things about this is it has a front panel with digital controls, so that means I already know there's got to be some kind of power supply in here that will run at a lower voltage, and I probably won't have to add my own transformer. I can probably tap off of the power supply that's inside. For now, let's open it up. Oh, and I think that the uh, layout of that front panel may be pretty handy. It, it may allow us to use some of the space that's in there like for the screen. I plan to use one of those uh, screens off of old Nokia phone, the 5110s, because they're really easy to use and yeah, small, they don't take a lot of processing power, so we'll see how that goes. My guess is there's probably going to be some screws on the bottom too. We'll see. Yeah, it looks like the metal is folded under the feet here, so those are going to have to come unscrewed as well. And of course that doesn't fit. Just for reference, it looks like these screws are a slightly different size than the screws that came off the backing for when we put it back together. That one's not actually screwed into anything. I think that's just a leveling screw anyways. And of course this one, don't know if you can see that. It's different, it's a star. Luckily I've got some of those over here. I don't know why that one had to be different. That should work. Some kind of weird security feature? Go. Now let's see if we can get this off. Get a little crusty in there. But yes, look what we have here. A little power supply board and a microcontroller based display and user interface all on one board. So that means we've got power. We've even got the relays to control this already so we might not have to buy one of those as long as we're not having to switch them on and off too fast. And I'm guessing there's some Transistors back here, those are probably to control these uh, these relays as well. A nice other little thing, we've got a fan here to push air around, which may help balance the heat load inside of here. Uh, also, it already comes with this uh, fire retardant heat shield for these pieces, which is great. And a nice little cooling fan down here for what's up here. So we may not have to do any special modifications for cooling. It looks like these, these screws are going to be fun to get to, some of them anyways. Uh, let's see if we can get disconnected. There we go. Nice. 
Not bad. We could even use this a little bit for layout if we wanted to check where button positions are in case we wanted to reuse those button slots. But my guess is that it's going to be filled up a little bit and I might just use the screen area. The little screen I want to use is only this big, so obviously there's a lot of a lot of room inside there. Maybe we'll just take up some space. Oh, can't see that. Maybe we'll just take up some of the space with something else, like a nice surround. These buttons all want to fall out, so I'm just going to take them out for now so they're not flying all over the place. There's one thing about this. These knobs, I'm, so, I'm kind of surprised they're just held in by these clips, so they feel really crappy, but... Oh well, it's only $100, so it's not like I expect the world from it. Looks like we've got two types of heating elements as well. This is supposed to be infrared for quick heating and cooling. Looks like the infrared ones are maybe up at top, and then we've got some regular heating elements at the bottom. That might be very helpful for evening out the heat, as long as we don't try to use these primarily. Next, I'm going to see if I can take off that power supply board, and then we'll look at that to see how it works and how we can use it. Those don't want to come off, so my guess is that they're actually uh, crimped on a little bit. Double check something. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little pin in the back, and you have to squeeze it to get them off. sharp. And that's the power supply board. Let's go take a closer look at it. Okay, so here we have the power supply board. Now I went ahead and took a look at this ahead of time and tried to figure it out as best I could and it's pretty obvious. This part is the power supply, this part controls everything. But I'll go through the pins and some of the circuitry real quick. This is the header for the temperature sensor, then we have a connector for the AC neutral and the AC live, a connector for that motor that was on the side that provides the convection, uh, the bottom heating elements and the top heating elements, then that fan that cooled the electronics, and finally the connector that went to the user interface. As far as the pins on the user interface, we have ground, power, the motor control pin, the, the heating element for the top, the heating element for the bottom, the fan, and finally the temperature sensor. So let's take a look at the circuitry itself. I'll give you a quick shot on the bottom in case you want to take a look and compare the two and go through it completely. But really it's pretty simple. With the AC coming in here through the MOV and this, this uh, soldered on um, fuse, we have it going through the bridge rectifier. It then feeds this chip, which is basically a battery charge chip that sends PWM to this transformer. And that's its way of not only maintaining current, but also isol isolating the higher voltages from the lower voltages. The power supply is actually split. We have a higher voltage line coming in here, which I tested to about uh, 11 volts. And then it's jumpered over to this track which feeds this voltage regulator. And this voltage regulator is pretty much just a, a Jelly Bean 7805. 
So it's a 5 volt voltage regulator and that supplies the 5 volts for our uh, digital electronics. As far as the controls go, we have a relay for that motor, we have a relay for the, the bottom heating elements and then a relay for the top heating elements. And then to control those we just have some standard transistors that are biased and those are controlled just from here. Now real quick I was going to power this up and show you some of the voltages. Uh, keep in mind that this does require AC so what I'm about to do is pretty dangerous and I'll remind you to use the rule of one hand at a time which basically means you'd never touch this circuit once it's plugged in with more than one hand at a time. That way current can't travel from one hand to the other and across your heart. So this little thing I made up is just a chopped up ICE cable with uh, some alligator clips on the end. Like I said, kind of dangerous. So you do this, it's on you to make sure you remain safe. I'm going to just attach the, the live first and then plug this in and attach the neutral over here. We'll do a little bit of testing to show the voltages that are coming up. First things first, the AC. And we are getting 122.4.5 volts. Now we'll test some DC. I'll go from this ground pin right here and I'll check this jumper which should be the higher 11 volts. And it's almost 11 volts. And then the pin next to it again is positive, so we should get about 5 volts off of that. Yeah, there we go. Now if I just jump that 5 volts over to the next pin there, it'll actually activate one of the relays, and I know that works just fine. You can hear that clicking. Well, the other thing I did, because I watched, actually want to use 3.3 volt logic, is I thought, well, does it work with 3.3 volt logic? So I made this little board. It's just a 3.3 volt voltage regulator. It's actually one of the SOT223 packages. I didn't have any of the regular through-hole D-packs, so I just cobbled that together. I'm going to connect this up over the ground and power, being very careful not to touch any of my AC lines. And now we can test to make sure we're getting our 3.3 volts out of it. And there we go, that's close enough. So I'm going to take this 3.3 volt line and touch it to one of these connectors, or these pins that controls the relays. All three of them work just fine. I did test that earlier as I said, and I also checked the amount of current that that pulls. It's only pulling about 500 microamps, so there's no problem driving that with a microcontroller. Now let's take a look at some of the design requirements I've come up with. I went ahead and wrote up the design targets that I wanted beforehand so that you guys wouldn't have to watch me you know, write all that stuff out. So the processor I want to use is the XMega128A4U, mainly because I have a bunch of them lying around. Uh, the screen, as you know, I want to use the Nokia 5110, and I also may need a cold junction compensator for the temperature sensor. And if I do, I'll probably use the MAX 31855. It's a nice little 8-pin package, even though it's only surface mount, but it operates at 3.3 volts, and it communicates via SPI, handles all the voltage regulation itself. So that's really great, and I don't have to worry about using the ADC on here and doing voltage regulation or smoothing or anything. Uh, on the screen, I want to display four pieces of information. I want to display the current temperature, the target temperature, the run time, and the mode it's in, like heating or just running or off. I also want to show a graph that displays the target temperature over time and the actual temperature at the current time using like a dotted line. I also want a menu mode that will allow me to select which profile. The idea behind that is you can store profiles on the chip inside Flash. The profiles will just be made up of time and temperature pairs basically. Uh, I also want to add four buttons. I want an up down button so you can select things in the menu, a select button and a stop button. That may be actually just an emergency stop button and you can just smack it in case something goes wrong. 
For USB, which is built into the X Mega, another reason I want to use it, I just want to make it as a serial device, so the generic CDC drivers. I want to be able to control it in real time, log it, and then upload and manage the profiles, you know, delete them, whatever. I may also add a buzzer so that I can indicate things like start and stop for the, the entire run or some kind of air beep in case something goes wrong. That's pretty much it. Okay, so before we end this video, there's a couple points about the oven I'd like to make. From what I understand on this oven, it'll go up to 260 degrees Celsius or 500 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, at least what I've read, about as high as you want to go when you're doing these reflows. Now, if it needs to go a little bit higher, it probably can. Also, if you noticed inside the electronics bay, most of the things already have standoffs. So as far as the user interface board that we're going to design, it should be nice uh, to use those standoffs instead of having to put custom ones in. Finally, I did rip out the temperature sensor, and it appears to be a PN junction type temperature sensor. I think you can see it there. Uh, and that's not really what I want to use. I want to use a K-type. Also, this was mounted to the side of one of the inner walls of the oven. I need this temperature sensor to probably be closer to the board itself, otherwise we won't get the correct temperature at the board. So I'll probably add a K-type sensor. I was thinking about reusing this connector and letting it run through the power, this power supply board, but from what I've read, you don't really want to do that with K-type sensors because there's too much noise that it can couple into the lines. So I might just run it straight to the, uh, uh, the custom UI board. Anyways, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, uh, subscribe to the channel. If you have any comments on it, let me know or anything you'd like to go over in the next video, please write that in there as well. And I'll see you in the next one.